get started. How good a guy is uh, Norton, do you feel like? Because he obviously cares about Alex Murphy, but he's not above manipulating his humanity in order to accomplish whatever sort of scientific goals that he has set out or been required to. Sort well, of I don't. Here's the thing, you see. I don't know if they're scientific, they're corporate. I think that's the interesting thing for me is that he has to challenge or his ethics are challenged because his boss is saying to him we have a release date and I don't care what you do but you've, you've got to get this product out on the street and I don't think he I don't think he's looked beyond the the challenge of engineering him you know, those, those type of scientists or obsessives are not, they don't think about corporation, money, that, all that side of it. They're just into the, the artistic side of it, if you want. Um, and he gets sucked into this ugly sort of scenario. Sure, sure. Well, uh, Jesse talked about the fact that he had put these Francis Bacon paintings in the in the background of these yeah. scenes, and and obviously he has a very uh, sophisticated uh, sort of uh, subtext to the to the whole film. How important are things like those paintings, or like the sort of political and and sort of ideological undertones when you're playing a character? I mean, you can't play a theme necessarily, but how how important are they in, to you in terms of understanding your character or playing them as well. Well, I think you have to, I think what you do is you play moment to moment and you play very, very m specific things. What is, it's reassuring when you're working on the minutia and that sort of, that in that sense, the detail, that you've got someone who's steering the ship who is worrying about all those other things that ultimately will hopefully enhance or lift the back the work up you know you could you could be doing great oscar winning work in something that is just stupid <laughs> and we've all done it <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's a smart guy and I think he wanted to elevate this and lift it just even though it's pop culture and it's a genre, a particular type of movie, he wanted to just kind of lift it and give it, give it, some, give it some sort of reality and some smarts. And he tried to get, he tried to weed the garden of all that, that sort of, you know, you get in these films sometimes, it's just stupid people doing stupid things. Sure, sure. Well, you know, uh, this movie doesn't really have a Clarence Boddicker, but a few years ago you might have been the go-to guy to play a character like that. Um, you know, how much are, are characters like, uh, I don't like Drexel Spivey or, or Stansfield from The Professional, how much of those characters still do you feel like in your wheelhouse or how eager are you to play those as opposed to this sort of, you know, mentor, scientist, uh, sort of authority figure that, you've, that you have since uh, become? That's a hard. It's interesting. Yeah. It, it, well, what we've, what you, what you've got is. You're at the mercy of the scripts and the quality of them and the writing and the characters. The last sort of, good villain, that I played, I think, was in the Book of Eli. And it was a really good. I thought it was a really interesting movie and a really good piece of writing. And it was a villain who was my age, as well. Mm -hmm. um, You know, I, I just got typecast, and I got very tired of it, and I got sick of myself doing it, and so I thought, well, if I'm tired of me, then all these other people must be, <laughs> and I wanted to really just sort of turn the ship around, and, and I've said no to a lot of those type of characters since, um, but it doesn't mean that they're great fun, and I wouldn't. I'm not. 
I'm just sort of not interested in them for now. Um, but I'll revisit the, you know, if someone wants to write me a, a you know, a 55-year-old Drexel, I'll, you know, I'll think about it.